A warm greeting? Today is Monday, June 24, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to talk about the tropical Atlantic region, where we will be monitoring the possibility of a low-pressure system developing next week that may find marginally favorable conditions for cyclonic development just east of the Lesser Antilles. As I mentioned yesterday, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation could give rise to strong tropical waves across the tropical Atlantic that might encounter some marginally favorable conditions for cyclonic organization as they approach the Eastern Caribbean. Although this is a long-term forecast, we will discuss which factors might favor the formation of at least one strong low-pressure system that we will need to monitor in the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. On another note, I wanted to briefly mention a strong tropical wave that will be moving over the Lesser Antilles tonight, eventually continuing its path westward across the Caribbean Sea. It is anticipated that by the end of this week, it will reach the Western Caribbean region, where conditions could allow for the formation of a strong low-pressure system. This is why the National Hurricane Center has marked the Western Caribbean and the Southern Gulf of Mexico as an area of interest for cyclonic development. If you're interested in knowing how this tropical wave could become a tropical cyclone, and what threat it poses to Mexico and Central America, America, I invite you to look for a video I recorded earlier tonight. However, in this video, I will focus on the potential development east of the Lesser Antilles. Although this is not typical for late June and early July, one of the main reasons why June and July are usually quiet in the tropical Atlantic is the presence of Saharan dust. In fact, we currently have the densest Saharan dust cloud that has moved across the region this year, affecting air quality throughout the Eastern Caribbean Sea. Saharan dust is one of the biggest obstacles that tropical waves face in achieving cyclonic formation as they move westward. If we look at climatology, we can see that typically the peak of Saharan dust events occurs in late June and early July, and we are currently seeing a cloud that is normal for this time of year. However, after the second week of July, the presence of Saharan dust typically decreases dramatically until the months of August and September, reaching levels that can allow for the development of tropical cyclones. Although we currently have a dense Saharan dust cloud over much of the tropical Atlantic, I want you to see in this graph that, on average, we have observed Saharan dust below normal this year. This is a factor that should eventually help tropical cyclones begin to form in the tropical Atlantic. But the big question is, could this be happening next week? Well, be aware that global model projections suggest that a strong low-pressure system could form in the tropical Atlantic by late June or early July. For example, the European model develops a strong low-pressure system east of the Lesser Antilles in about seven days, and eventually tracks it west-northwest while strengthening the system. However, we are talking about a very long-term forecast, which means it has great uncertainty and low accuracy in the projections. Therefore, for now, we should not worry but we will be paying attention to this area. In fact, the National Hurricane Center has not yet marked the area as a zone of interest for cyclonic development, meaning that the National Hurricane Center does not anticipate development in this area for the next seven days. However, I suspect that will change in the coming days if the consistency in the global models continues. For example, the American model also develops a strong low-pressure system in early July in the tropical Atlantic. Similarly, the German model has a low-pressure system in this area for the weekend. Other models, such as the Canadian model, show the same scenario. So if these projections continue in the models, it is likely that between Tuesday and Wednesday, the National Hurricane Center will mark this area with a low potential for cyclonic development. However, this is preliminary and we will have many days to calmly monitor this area. One of the reasons why I think the National Hurricane Center will mark this area as a zone of interest for development is that the GFS Ensemble members have several members developing into a tropical depression or tropical storm just east of the Lesser Antilles in early July. But as it is a long-term projection, there is a lot of uncertainty about whether this disturbance would move on a more westerly or west-northwest trajectory. We really don't know which areas could be under threat, and we don't even know if this cyclonic development will finally happen. But see that the ensemble members of the European model almost all develop at least a tropical depression for next weekend towards the east of the Lesser Antilles. So this is quite a significant signal. And if there are no changes in these projections in the next runs, it is very likely that the area will be marked as a zone of interest for development. Also, see the great uncertainty that exists from day 7 in the projections, which is totally normal. So for now, we cannot talk about what effects this disturbance will have in the Eastern Caribbean. But if you see that in terms of development probabilities, the European model ensemble members have between a 40 to 50 percent chance of developing a tropical depression towards the east-southeast of the Lesser Antilles in early July. Although it is unusual to see cyclonic development in June in this area, know that during the first 10 days of July, 
we have historically seen the development of some cyclones just east and southeast of the Lesser Antilles. So this gives us an idea that little by little the tropical Atlantic is becoming more favorable as we approach the peak of the season, which is between August and October. One of the factors that could be helping the development of a strong low-pressure system is the projection that wind shear will be below normal over the tropical Atlantic zone, particularly towards the eastern Caribbean. So any low-pressure system that moves through this area could find marginally favorable conditions for development. In fact, the more southward this disturbance stays, the greater its development chances because if it takes a west-northwest trajectory, strong wind shear will be present to the north-northeast of the Caribbean, which could interfere with its organization. Another favorable factor we have been talking about for several months is that sea surface temperatures in this region are above normal, and this could be advancing the onset of cyclonic formation in the tropical Atlantic. However, other factors that may hinder cyclonic formation are the presence of Saharan dust and dry air. For example, the GFS model projection suggests that although a low-pressure system could develop in early July, it would also be surrounded by quite a bit of dry air to the north and northwest of the circulation. This dry air could be interfering with its organization. So we will see how these projections evolve and how the low-pressure system interacts with Saharan dust and dry air. The important thing is that for now, we will only be vigilant. There is no reason to worry in the eastern Caribbean region, mainly because the National Hurricane Center has not yet marked the area as a suspicious cyclonic zone. So I invite you to stay tuned to Hurricane Info for updates. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, and then click the bell to receive notifications when I record new videos. Well, I will say goodbye now. I will update this forecast if significant changes occur in the projections. See you later.